I was just gonna start. Literally just gonna start and Marley walked over to drink his water. And we're done. Okay. <laughs> that took about 30 seconds. I'm going to edit part of that out. But he literally did that for 30 seconds. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Amanda with the Happy Homestead here. Today is Thursday, August 17th. I am sorry. I did not do a preserving project yesterday. Everything just caught up with me yesterday. So much that I literally fell asleep at 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> slept for I think close to 10 hours. I was exhausted. So I apologize. That did not happen yesterday with the preserving, but we're going to make up for it today. Uh, it's early in the morning. My husband took the kids to school so we can get started pretty fast. The first thing we're going to do today is make our calendula lotion. Now I mentioned this the other day, uh, and this is why I grow calendula and then I dry our flowers. I pick them in the morning. So these are the calendula flowers that I have grown and harvested and I freeze dried these this year. But previous to this year, I would just buy some organic dried calendula. Now, interestingly enough, you can see the color difference there. Um, so this is what I'm going to be using for today. This is a lotion that I found a recipe for a couple of years ago and kind of adapted and modified it for what I wanted. So all it has is jojoba oil that has been infused with the calendula flowers organic shea butter and mango butter. And then you can add some essential oils if you wanna have a light scent to your lotion. I've been using this lotion and making my own for over two years now. And every time I get out of the shower and put it on, it just feels so luxurious. It feels so good. I feel ready to tackle the day. <laughs> that sounds so crazy and silly, but I'm telling you, when you feel good, right? In all aspects of your life, you feel like you can do anything. Well, this lotion is just a small component to help you feel that way every morning. But I put it on my face at night, like I lathered on my face at night before I go to bed. It's just so moisturizing and so nourishing to your skin. You could also use sweet almond oil if that's what you have, um, but I find jojoba is really nourishing for the skin as well. So the first step, is to infuse your jojoba oil with the calendula flowers. Now, I have already done this. However, I'm gonna do it again today to show you for my next batch in six to eight weeks. And there's two ways you can do this. There's the, the quick and easy way, which you can do it on the stove, either on a double boiler or on really low heat. You're gonna put a half a cup of your oil, either sweet almond or jojoba oil in a small saucepan. And you're just gonna fill in with some calendula flowers. Now, not so much that the oil doesn't actually um, cover the flowers and it can't infuse with it, right? You need a half a cup of oil. And so I would say probably equal amounts, a half a cup of flowers. And you're just gonna infuse it for about 20 to 30 minutes, slowly stirring, making sure nothing is getting too hot. The lazy, easy way, which is what I do, is I will take a half a cup, maybe three quarters of a cup of my calendula flowers, take my half a cup of oil, put it in a small jar and put it in the windowsill. And then every day or every other day, whenever I think about it or walk by it, I'll shake it. And all of those medicinal properties are getting infused into the oil without me having to do too much. So that's what I do. This oil has already been strained. It was in the refrigerator. This is from the last batch I did a couple of months ago, but I'm going to infuse some more oil today so you can see that process. Okay, so I've got my jar here and I am just going to fill it with some of these calendula flowers. Now when I do it in this way, I'm not measuring things. You probably notice now if you've been following along, I measure when it's absolutely necessary. Other times I just kind of wing it. Um, I don't have any jojoba oil right now, but like I said, I do have this sweet almond oil. 
I will link the products down below. And I'm just gonna kind of cover the calendula a little bit. There we go. Not too much, because you really want all of those medicinal properties to be infused and make your oil potent. Lit it up. Shake. So after you've shaken it up, you can go put it in the windowsill. Now you'll see that there are some solids that are still kind of above the oil line. So I'm not gonna add any more oil right now, but if I feel like I need to later today or tomorrow, I will. But I'm just gonna shake this every day, and I usually let it infuse from anywhere from four to six weeks. When I make a batch of this lotion, I will go ahead and get the next batch of my infused oil ready. And so I always have it ready as I'm making my lotion. And like I said, I do it every maybe six to eight weeks. Okay, and the reason I put it in the windowsill is so that the sun very gently every day kind of heats up the oil and helps extract those properties. All right, so now let's get started on our lotion. I have in a large glass dish 100 grams of my mango butter and 100 grams of my organic shea butter. Again, I'll link these down below and we're gonna add in our infused oil and use an immersion blender to mix it all together. So I'm gonna add in my half a cup of infused oil to my 100 grams mango, 100 grams shea. And you can choose to add an essential oil if you want a little bit of a scent. I have a sweet orange oil here. I'm just gonna add a couple of drops. I don't really like it to be overwhelming. I really want it to be very subtle. We're gonna use our immersion blender starting on the lowest speed and basically whip this together. It's kind of like a whipped body butter. And then I've got just a glass dish to get it into, but I'll show you that when we get this all whipped up. And that's it. It takes just a few minutes to put it together. And then once everything is really emulsified together, I put it into this glass dish. This is just one of those really pretty Weck jars, W-E-C-K. I love these jars. I don't actually ever put a lid on it, but I have it in a really wide opening glass dish so I can easily just kind of scoop my fingers in and take what I need at any point in time. A couple of things to note. I would recommend always doing glass and nothing plastic because you just don't want any of those chemicals of the plastic to leach through, especially if you are heating some of your oil infusion on the stove and your oil's a little warm, right? Just like you would never put plastic in the microwave. Same principle here. Secondly, if you're not planning on using this within a couple of months, right? This usually lasts me, like I said, anywhere from six to eight weeks, maybe a little longer, then I would store it in the refrigerator. Sometimes if I'm making a double or triple batch and not just one at a time, I will store the extras in the fridge because we are talking about products that don't have any preservatives in them, right? This lotion is not a preservative laden product. You saw me put in what is in it. And so I would store it in the refrigerator when I am not using it readily available at any point in time. But because I just used one batch, I just go put this in my bathroom counter and I use it as needed. So we are going to use a rubber spatula to get everything into our WEC jar. And what's great is that whatever's left over, <laughs> you can immediately just start rubbing into your hands. I'm actually gonna put this in the refrigerator for a little bit. I want it to harden just a bit. Um, I can leave it overnight and it'll be perfectly fine until my next one runs out, which will be in a few days. So I'll just keep this in the fridge, harden it up a bit, and then pull it out when I'm ready to use it. But that is it to make your own homemade calendula infused lotion. It really is the only reason I grow the calendula flowers because I love this lotion. Okay, now that we're all fully moisturized and greased up, we're gonna get on to our next project of the day and that is tomatoes. 
So you've seen me throw my tomatoes into plastic freezer bags and then throw them in the freezer. Sometimes I core them, sometimes I don't. So last night before I truly just passed out in bed, I took three of my gallon bags of tomatoes. So basically three gallons of tomatoes and put them in these bowls overnight. Um, I did put like a towel on top just to keep any flies or, or fruit flies that are in the house off of them. Uh, but I did put them in these bowls so that they could thaw overnight. And I'm going to attempt to show you how to make sauce um, a couple of different ways over this month and possibly into September just so that you can use your tomatoes up and figure out what works for you based on what you may have at home. So today is just really a small batch, three gallons. Usually I do this with all of my tomatoes, anywhere from eight to 12 gallon bags at one time and I make it a big day event. Um, but today I wanna show you just three. And so I've got a large stock pot here on the counter as well. I'm going to take all of the tomatoes that I can and use my food mill to get the seeds, the cores, and the skins off. And I'm going to put the, the pulp and the goodness that comes out of the bottom of that food mill into my stock pot, and we're going to make a marinara, attempt to make a marinara. Now, I say attempt because it takes, it's hard to get those that really beautiful, thick marinara that you can buy in the store. The reason, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I have found it difficult. And the reason is because they are using true paste tomatoes that don't have a lot of liquid. Not all of these are paste. I have frozen other tomatoes just because I needed to get them put away and not start rotting. The other reason is because they're cooking down that sauce a really long time and they're doing it in a commercial kitchen. They're doing it in these high production environments. We're doing it here at home. But we're gonna get it as thick as we can get it, which requires to get a lot of this juice and liquid out and requires us to really low and slow cook this sauce to get it thicker. There's a couple of do's and don'ts and I really, I feel it's my responsibility to kind of say these things if you're watching. So you're gonna see a lot of the liquid in these bowls and people are gonna tell you, do not get rid of that liquid. They're gonna say, put it in your pot with your tomatoes. And that's because that is a lot of the natural citric acid that is in the tomatoes, which is what makes it safe for canning. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently, but I'm still gonna make it safe. And the reason is because I don't want all that water in my sauce. It just prolongs the whole process of thickening it up but I don't want to lose the, the safe level of acidity to properly can my tomatoes. So I'm going to be adding citric acid, powdered citric acid to each one of my jars to make sure that I am at the safe level of acidity for canning. You can do lemon juice. I just find that it's two tablespoons of lemon juice per quart, one tablespoon lemon juice per pint. I'm just, add, I'm just adding more liquid when I do that. <laughs> So I invested in actual powdered citric acid from Azure Standard either last year or earlier this year. And that's what I add to my tomatoes from now on rather than the lemon juice. Okay, so that's kind of the important do and don't just in regards to the citric acid. You have to make sure that you're at the correct level of acidity to can your tomatoes. You can either water bath can them or you can pressure can them. I'm gonna be pressure canning. I think it's around 20 to 25 minutes. Water bath, you've gotta go for the 40 or 45. Okay, do's and don'ts. Don't ever can tomatoes that froze on the vine. I know we're not there yet, being in August, but if you have tomatoes that are out on your plants and they freeze, you leave them out too long and they're freezing on the vine, you can't can them. Because once they freeze, the acidity level changes within the tomato and you can't be guaranteed that it is safe for canning. You can can, previously harvested and frozen tomatoes like we've done today. With frozen tomatoes, it is best to convert them into stewed tomatoes or sauce for canning. You're not gonna take these tomatoes and can them as whole crushed tomatoes, right? It's going to have to be something that is like cooked down because the texture has changed as well. 
it is important to take the skins off of your tomatoes. It's not just for the texture, but it's also for the, the safe level of um, canning for bacteria, etc. When you have a tomato that is sitting on the vine, right? You think about where all the, the bacteria could lie. It's really on that skin. And so by pulling the skin off and getting rid of it or using a food mill like we're gonna do today, you're helping again to eliminate any unnecessary bacteria getting into your product. I'm also gonna be showing you two other ways to do this. One, without a food mill, um, and we'll do that when I have enough of my paste tomatoes fresh that we can actually just roast them and I'll show you how to take the skins off. And then the third way, I'm going to be using my Mac Daddy <laughs> tomato milling machine. I bought it pre-pandemic or, or during the pandemic, either in 2019 or 2020. And um, it was an investment, but it is amazing. I can whip through those 12 to 15 gallons of tomatoes in maybe 30 minutes. Like it's pretty awesome. So I'll show that on a different day, but I wanted to show you a couple of different ways so that you can do this at home. I'm going to start getting my tomatoes that are um, totally thawed in my mill and then the pulp in the stock pot. I have two pots here because some of these tomatoes really are still frozen. So actually, let's start there. I'm gonna get the really frozen tomatoes in the larger pot and put it on the stove just so I can heat them up enough to really get them through the food mill. And then the ones that are soft, we're gonna throw right in. Okay, so this pot is still really cold, if not partially frozen. I'm gonna get this on the stove. So there is a, it's not really a blade, but it's a very dull blade in here, along with some holes on the bottom that allow the pulp to go through, but the seeds, core, and skin stay up top. So the food mill is really effective, but it is very hands-on, very manual. And it will take some time to go through all of the tomatoes, even the ones that are on the stove, with the food mill, um, which is why I purchased that Mac Daddy a few years ago. However, if you're not doing large volumes, the food mill is by far the better investment. Every now and then I find I just have to reverse it and then kind of rearrange the tomatoes. And you'll see on the bottom that pulp is coming out. All right, all the tomatoes that were on the stove are good and heated through. We're gonna continue back with milling them in the food mill. Uh, this is still pretty liquidy. I am not adding any seasoning at this point. I'm just gonna get this on the stove about medium heat, get it to a slow boil, and then stir it every now and then, but it's gonna stay on the stove for a few hours. Okay, so the sauce has been simmering here on the stove for about, I'm gonna say an hour and 20 minutes. And you can see how much, ow, and you can see how much it has reduced. This is my dilemma with sauce every year. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually turn the burner off and just let it sit for a few hours and maybe come back to it tonight. But I'm gonna take it off the burner and just let it sit and we'll come back and check it tonight and maybe simmer it again and see how much thicker we can get it. And we're back and it's 8.30 at night. <laughs> 
I have left the sauce on the stove here for, let's say nine hours. I think it was around 11-ish that I stopped it, turned it off and moved it. Um, so it's been sitting for about nine hours. I just turned the burner back on onto like a medium high. And um, I don't really know what my plan is at the moment because I'm not canning tonight. I'm tired. Um, but I was thinking I'd get this to a boil again, maybe just kind of let it simmer for a little while while I'm up and then leave it overnight on the stove and check it in the morning. It's not horribly runny, but it is not thick enough to my liking. But I'm gonna let it sit overnight. I'm gonna let it come to a slow boil and just while I'm cleaning up the kitchen, um, let it do its thing, turn the burner off, go to bed. We'll come back in the morning and we'll check this. Totally forgot. I got the sliced potatoes out of the freeze dryer either last night or this morning. No, this morning. It must have been this morning. And um, I got them each tray into a gallon, I think it was a gallon size Mylar bag, the largest bag I had. And so I ended up with four bags. I heat sealed them and now they are in the pantry. So subscribe if you haven't already, I would appreciate it. And then you can follow along in how we're using all of this beautiful food that we've grown, that we've preserved, and that nourishes our bodies and our souls. Thanks for joining me today as we made our lotion and we started to get our sauce together. I will see you tomorrow. Stay healthy, stay well. Bye-bye.